Hello, and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop Cardboard Coat Check. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge, answering your gaming and game night questions and striving to make everyone's gaming experience better. Tonight, the question we are answering is, what's in the box? I am going to be cracking open a new sealed copy of 878 Vikings from Academy Games. It's a game I'm really excited to check out. But first, I just want to mention, you can find us all over the web at as Tabletop Bellhop One Word, with our main webpage being at tabletopbellhop.com. There, where you can find all kinds of gaming content, including unboxing videos like these, actual plays, and answers to other gamers' gaming and game night questions. If you've got a gaming related question for us, send it to questions at tabletopbellhop.com or click on Ask the Bellhop when at the website. You can also find us on your podcatcher as under the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast, where we answer one or more of your questions each week, as well as feature a game review and cover any games we played recently. Enough about us. Um, I'm going to crack open this game, but first, a little bit of intro, why I'm so excited about this game. My wife and I just finished watching Vikings all the way up to season, whatever you call it, 6.5, up to the 10th episode of season one, really enjoyed the series, enjoyed the first half more than the second half, but enough about that, and then we've actually moved on to watching The Lost Kingdoms, which is not, is a related series in the fact that it's set around the same time period and covers the same period of the 800 ADs where the Vikings were invading England, and England was trying to form its own country, trying to, to set up a monarchy, basically, and because of watching that, I am really itching to play this game. I want to see how this plays out. I don't know if there's a Ragnar Lothbrok in the game or um, Uber from the other series, but I just all about Vikings lately after watching those series, after binging them on Netflix while being stuck at home during this pandemic. Uh, so we are going to take a quick look at what's in this box. That's why I'm excited about it. I'm going to read off the back of it here. First, I'll show you the back of the box, which looks pretty cool, sweet. I am also a big fan of Academy Games Cube War Games, which is this is part of them, though this one in particular has miniatures. Uh, my particular favorite being 1812 Invasion of Canada. That is a five player board game that I just love. I love the, the mechanics of it, where it's about controlling cities and the cubes to determine who the order it is and everything else. This is part of that series, so I am looking forward to the game for that reason. So, 878 Vikings Invasion of England. The Vikings are coming, lured by plunder from past raids, a great heathen host of Norsemen has landed in England, seeking glory and riches. These warriors are poised to thunder across the heartland of the divided English kingdoms. No longer content with just raiding, the Vikings are here to settle and rule the lands they conquer. In 878 Vikings, players command either the invading Vikings or the defending English. Viking players lead waves of invading Norsemen and fearless berserker warriors. The English player leads the House Carl. King's household troops and the Thagan, regional nobles, along with the feared, the local peasant levies, who are called upon to defend their cities. Players on each side work together to coordinate their strategies in an attempt to control city shires. The English begin the game controlling all of England, but the Vikings repeatedly invade from the sea with more men, event intent on conquest. 878 Vikings is an area control game that is great for head-to-head -head or up to four-player team play, so one less player than 1812. It includes exciting information, innovations to the game system of historical game of the year 1775 Rebellion. So yeah, it's based on the Rebellion series. I uh, list what it includes, but we're about to see that, so I'm just going to cr crack the shrink, and then we'll tip the camera down so you can better see what I see. Note, I have not seen the contents of this box before, so you're going to need to hear my thoughts on it live to get to know if I'm excited or disappointed by anything that's inside. Alright, so here we have the box. It's a pretty standard size box. Same size, I hope, as 1812, so it stores nice on the shelves. Some nice Viking artwork. Nope, no horns. All right, what do we got? Right on top, we got baggies. Always a fan of getting baggies in my board games. I appreciate any publisher who puts baggies in. Oh, these aren't baggies. I'm wrong. It's not baggies. I have no idea what we have. We have... No, it's a plastic sleeve to cover something. I am totally wrong. It looked like baggies. 
Having not played the game, I'm not sure what this is for, but it looks like there's going to be some nice components to overlay something or protect something. Bag full of those. We have a baggie. A uh, nice cloth bag. If this is anything like the previous games, you're going to put initiative cubes in here. And every turn, you're going to draw the cube to see whose turn it is. It's actually a really brilliant system because you never know which side's going to go next. Especially when there are multiple sides. There's four different sides. So the same side could go, like the same side of the board could go twice in a row. Then we have what replaces wooden cubes. Which is, this is the thing I'm not sure of the most in this game. Is all previous ones of these games just use cubes on the board. And while miniatures are cool and all, I just have a feeling these are just going to fall over. Plus these are super tiny. So I don't know if you can see just how small... That black troop is. That's a Viking of some sort. You can see the shield. So there's black troops. Looks like a Viking of some sort. I could be wrong. Let's see if I can get one of each of these even out here. Without making a terrible mess. We have yellow. So those definitely look like the English. We have a spearman. Again, I don't even know. if. Oh, almost. If I can get my camera to focus on that. Look at the side, like that's tiny. That's a very tiny little miniature. Little miniature. Then we have green. This looks like it's probably uh, a, a, also an English troop. So, oh, it was almost there for a second. Looks like a knight holding a sword in front of it. So small. Then we have blue. This looks more like a Norseman with a pike and a shield. so tiny then we have red which definitely are Norsemen holding two axes these are not the kind of miniatures I could see anyone painting they are far too small and detailed I'm sure people have done it I, I shouldn't say I can't see anyone they're not miniatures I would want to paint so my whole complaint is going to be moving those on the board they're going to get knocked over I in this case I think I may have preferred cubes, and I'm kind of hoping, I don't know if it's true, if there's cubes in here too. That would make me very happy that you could use either. Yes, I get it. The little Viking minis probably look better on the board. For playability though, cubes in this kind of game, like it just, it's an abstract game in the first place, and not having having abstract units to me would be perfectly fine. So a ton of little tiny miniatures. Then we get to a punch board. I don't remember a punch board in any of the previous uh, Academy games, so I'm not sure exactly what these do, but it looks like you're going to have characters. Perhaps those will get represented on the board. Then we have an advertisement for their other games. Fair enough. 1777, Mary Nostrum, I've heard good things. Conflict of Heroes considered some of the best war games. Military war games in there would be my, my favorite right there. Oh no, that's 1754, so I don't even see my favorite on the list. Up next, we have a reference card. Shows the map. Probably the starting territories for everyone. Uh, Single-sided. Pretty thin card, but you know what? For reference, as long as you're not... If you're not using this, moving it, putting things on it, this would be fine. Then we get to the rules. Fairly significant rule book. I wouldn't say it's intimidating, but significant rule book. Showing the different armies, the different areas of England, different kingdoms, different shires. Picture of all the components. No, no component list, which is a little disappointing. Table of contents is nice. Index, glossary, gameplay. Text is a little small, but what's nice to see is it's color coded. So that's a nice touch. You got some nice callouts with examples. Some really nice examples over here of the combat system with the dice. I've never had a complaint for any of the Academy Games rule books in the past. I don't expect this to be any different. There's obviously something with those heroes getting involved in battles. Heroes are named characters. But we should be getting to our cards, because this is actually a card-driven system for moving your units, your armies around on the boards, whereas combat is dice-based. So card-based to get your units around and get reinforcements, but dice for actual combat. We're at the historical overview. So 
these are scenarios. I'm going to back up. Card clarification. So how many pages were the rules? Only 10 pages. That's really not bad. 10 pages of rules for a historic war game is really not bad. Now we're going to have the board. This is going to be fairly large. We'll see how much I can get into the camera. Oh, all of it should be fine. There we go. You get to see most of England there. I'll have to slide it back just a little bit. So there's some kind of timer track at the bottom here. You have Northumbria rice. You have, I can't even read that. Wow, small text on here. This should be Wessex, but it says like, it looks like the word's bigger than Wessex. Probably because they're using, yeah, Northumbria is written kind of weird too. All right, map of England in 878. There's another track up here on the top. Uh, it's a mounted board, one-sided. Nothing special on this side. You can see how it was mounted, which is nice. Mounted boards used to be a big deal because uh, war games didn't tend to come with mounted boards. It used to be when you bought a war game, your board was this quality. It's really nice to see that that has shifted to be more like most hobby board games. Then we have a fairly nice tray at the bottom to hold everything. Um, I know there's only, what, the five different factions probably in this game. Uh, there are the standees, so I am totally, I'm assuming I'm right on those hero tokens. You're going to be able to put heroes on the board. So that is something I have not seen in an Academy game. There is also a standard meeple here, probably for keeping track of which year it is. We have the dice, so there should be combat dice in here as well as completely blank dice. The completely blank dice are used for initiative. If there are, yep, there's a completely blank blue, a completely blank red, black, and green. So in this system, these dice would get thrown into that bag, and you would draw one out, and that's whose turn it is. So that's for your four players. And then each unit type is going to have its own die. I don't know the symbols on this game to know what they mean. I'm going to guess that's a hit, and that's possibly a route based on previous plays. So we have two hits, four, uh, three of that symbol, and a blank on this yellow die, and there are two of those. Then there's a red die that has axes all over it, and then two horns. So four double axes and two horns. Really nice dice. Other thing that's worth noting is that these are inset. That is actually etched, so there is very little chance that the white ink on this is going to get rubbed off because that's actually inset. And even if it does, you could just color it back in. So we have two red dice. We have two blue dice, which have swords and the horns and the, the running away symbol. I, I'm guessing that's routing. Based on previous games. Routed units just have to move away to one square away. Then we have a green with black dice. Uh, same symbols we're looking at. We're looking at horns. The route symbol. And there's hopefully some swords on here. There's some swords. So green units don't have a lot of swords on them. And then we have a black. With axes again. So the axes are probably the Vikings. And the swords are probably the British. That's it. Bunch of dice. All excellent quality dice. Plastic dice. Again, I like the fast etched. I like the fact they switch between white and black too for contrast sake. They didn't stick to one color for all the painting. Then, finally, we get to cards. We have quite a substantial deck of cards. Now, there should be four decks here, at least. One for each of the players. And then possibly additional ones for other types. Yeah, so... The Thean. The Norseman. The Husklar. The Feared. And the Berserker decks. Oh, and some additional cards. So you have decks for the five different factions in the game, which again, seems odd to me that 
it's a four player game when there are five factions and they have five different types of troops. Moving these up so you can see them a little better. Uh, we then have boats, cards, and then a little random assortment. Oh, this is Thegan, so I'm assuming they go there. I don't know. Alfred's army, so King Alfred was one of the Norsemen. I don't know where that card goes. So, as an example, you have a card here that has some information on the side for probably the number of units it can move, how far it can move them, or a special ability it can be used as. And this just says, the Treaty of Whitmore. Check for game end at round five or later. So this is special how the game ends. Now, if this is like any of the previous games, one of the ways the game ends is that all five sides, all five factions call for a peace treaty. And then it's whoever has the most cities wins. So that's how the previous games in the series went. Here you have your standard unit cards. So you have the top, it's the number of units you can move and how many spots you can move them. And that's the basic movement system in these games. And if you look, almost all the cards here have the same system. And then you get to some special abilities like the Viking Terror Berserker Battle. For this battle, the English may not draw a feared card. And you have all kinds of special ones, Viking forts and so on. A lot of these will be based on historic offense. So that's the red deck. I'm just going to really quickly go for the feared deck. It's going to be similar. So I don't know. This feared deck looks like you get more troops somehow. So this entire deck is set up different than the previous game. So there you go. So the feared, obviously, is not a faction that the English play. Because if you look, this just has numbers on them. There's no way to move the feared. So there, I answered my own question about how you play, why it doesn't play five players. Then we get into the Norsemen, and same type of deal. You've got your treaty, your number of units that can move, what the units look like, and then a bunch of special abilities, or special effect cards. We should see the same thing in the Thane. Again, there's their, their withdrawal, and troops. One troop, three spots. Three troops, one spot, and so on, and special abilities. And we should see the exact same thing in this deck. Oh, no, oh, this has got... Oh, you know what? Yeah, I put that in the wrong pile. <laughs> so again, there is their treaty card. We have units. We have special abilities. Now, this is going to probably be Viking Reinforcements. Who came in on the boat? That's my guess. So it says, Ivar the Boneless. Hey, Ivar the Boneless is definitely a character from the Viking series. Bjorn Ironside's army. So this could actually be right based on the Viking TV series. Ube Ragnarsson. Yeah, these are all characters definitely from the Viking TV series. Rolo, which would be Ragnar's brother. Yes, these are all characters I very much recognize. So yes, these are the different armies coming in over on the boats each turn. Very cool. Looks interesting. Looks cool. Uh, no complaints about component quality. I'm going to put these back, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort them into this tray by type so that when I do go to play, it'll be nice and easy to set up. And what you would do is put the dice underneath. So what I haven't shown here, so for example, I definitely know these characters. Now I'm even more excited to play characters I know and recognize from the series. Which, yes, I could just read a history book and learn this too. What'll be interesting is reading the history book part of this and comparing it to the TV series. So, there is how you would store each army type. So you get the blue here, the miniatures would fit underneath, and then I would put that on top. So, very nice tray. Uh, it'd be nice to have a piece of plastic to cover this, but you know what? That's just a bonus. I don't mind not having that bonus. We'll put the boats, and I don't know where this card goes, so we'll throw it there. Everything fits in good. I wouldn't want to like turn this upside down, but you know what? I store my games horizontally, so this should sit fine on my shelf with anything coming out. Plus, I'm going to throw a nice heavy board on top of that to hold everything in place. So, before playing, I'm just going to have to punch this. I'm going to have to sort out the minis, and we're good to go. Well, and read the rulebook. I did not figure out what this is for. I have no clue. Maybe I'm missing something. Is there a way to cover up those? I'm going to go back down here for one second. Okay, very cool. All right, added bonus. Look at this. This is neat. This is going to come apart. 
All right, I'm impressed, Academy Games. You just won me over with this one. This is impressive. All right, ready for it? This comes apart. Check it out. All right. Then you put this in. Then you put this on top. Look at this. Bonus. Look at that. That's sweet. All right. I'm not going to do that all now. But that that is very neat. I was not expecting that at all. So here you go. Whatever player. Here's your components. Very cool. Bonus points Academy Games. I wonder if all their games do that now. Because that is really cool. That beats out baggies. I can't complain they didn't give us baggies. That's awesome. Very impressed. That 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 made my day seeing that. Alright, I'm gonna put those on top still. Alright. So there you have it. A look at 878 Vikings Invasions of England from Academy Games. Very impressed so far. Still don't know on the minis. I won't know until I play. When I, when I play, I'll give my final thoughts on that. You'll be able to find those at tabletopbellhop.com. Um, rules look good. Uh, components look great. Very cool component storage. That's a, that's a really neat thing that the tray in the bottom snaps apart and it comes with lids for all the different components. That is a it's big bonus points there, Academy Games. Uh, game looks fantastic. I'm really hyped to play this just because of the, the media I've been consuming lately. It's everything I was expecting to see in here. Not sure about miniatures instead of cubes, but we'll see. So, yeah, impressed by this. Looks really good. Looking forward to playing this at least two-player in the coming weeks. When I do get that played, I will be tweeting, sharing, and talking about it on social media where I can be found everywhere as Tabletop Bellhop, one word. Uh, if you dig this video, be sure to check out our other videos and hit us up at patreon.com slash tabletopbellhop. And please consider tipping your bellhop. For Tabletop Bellhop, I am Mo Tuzno. Good night and game on.